Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm doing great today. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming and having a quick chat with us. You bet. How have you found South Start so far? Oh, it's been fun. It's uh, There's a lot of energy. It's uh, exciting to That's see great. so many people who are really enthusiastic about startups. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think the energy is something. I was just speaking to Craig Swan, the director before, something that he really wanted to try and bring. You know, it's not just about sitting and listening to somebody speak. It's about you know creating connections and about... You know, some of the conversations that happen afterwards as well. Exactly. Actually, that's where most of the magic happens is making those connections and finding partners. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and and, and you know, deals are being done, and 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 I think I've, I grew up in Adelaide and I've lived here, but you you, you don't realize the you know the wealth and the you know some of this great stuff that's happening. It's really exciting. It's very exciting. There's a, a huge proportion of startups. Uh, even in the space uh, sector. Oh, we're just speaking to, to Lloyd then. So. Yeah, so just think about this for a minute. Uh, Adelaide has uh, about the same number of space startups as Sydney. Yeah. So stop and think about that from a mm. per population standpoint. What a difference that is. It's yeah, pretty it's a, amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, how, how do you find Adelaide? Oh, I love Adelaide. It's it's a wonderful place to live, and everyone's really been friendly. And it's it's. I mean, there's what's not to love. You've got everything from the beach to, you know, up uh, uh, Flinders Range and uh, McLaren and Barossa. It's all about the wine. So, it's beautiful. So yeah. how how did you end up here then? Well, uh, my company Nova Systems is headquartered here in Adelaide. Nice. Uh, that's where it was founded. So. It's good to be here. It's a perfect base. I do go all around Australia uh, talking to people about the space industry, but it's always mm. good to come home here. I appreciate you don't have a, a lot of time, but uh, just just being the, the geek I am, I'd really love to hear what, it, what it's like being in space, seeing that you've been up there a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's... Uh, it's actually amazing. Uh, there's really, we don't even have the vocabulary to talk about sure. it because it's so different from a normal human experience. Um, being up there is a little bit uh, like translating to another universe. Yeah, wow. Uh, it's especially kind of weird, you know, the, the, you, uh, roll, you know, uh, drive through, um, uh, Kennedy Space Center mm. and you can hear the ocean and smell the salt and smell the grass and the, uh, you know, the lots and lots of, uh, wildlife and, and uh, flora around there, and then you go into the space shuttle, and they close and lock an airtight hatch. And then uh, after a couple of hours, you get launched into space. It takes about eight and a half minutes to get there. It's a wild ride, mm. uh, and everything starts to look different right away. And then you suddenly hit microgravity, and everything around you is floating. Wow. And it sounds different. It looks different. It feels different. And then at the end of the mission, you come back down through the Earth's atmosphere and you land in Florida and they open up the airtight hatch and you open it up and you think, was it a dream? Did I, is it, is, I'm, it, everything is just exactly the same way it was when I got on, mm. but everything else is so different. And do you think, did, did, it, did it change you as a person, the experience? I think um, having the dream that you've had since a child yeah, come sure. true is going to change anyone. Mm. Um, I think uh, the biggest change we all experience, and astronauts call it the overview effect, okay. is the sense of looking down at the Earth and yeah. realizing there are no boundaries and no limits. And that has a lot of implications, both from a political standpoint and a nationalist standpoint, but also from the standpoint of protecting the Earth. And what we have, yeah. Yes, what, what, what you do in one place affects the whole ecosystem. Mm. And so you can't just say, oh, well, that's not a problem. And that's interesting. That, I mean, it's, it's quite literally perspective, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, we asked Lloyd uh, what he sort of saw the next you know, uh, 20, 30, 40 years looking like in terms of space from a commercial viewpoint, but also, um, yeah, I suppose, further exploration. What, what's your vision? Well, I'm, I'm really dedicated to it. I think because I was an astronaut and got to have my dream come true, mm. I would like everyone to have that perspective of Earth that, that I've got. I think it's really important. So uh, the first step, of course, is to promote commercial space, right? So we hope to get more people in space, but it, it takes time. Yeah. So everything that we do to get uh, more technology launched, more capabilities get more comfortable as a human race operating in space, yeah. the more people uh, will also be able to follow and get that experience. So I think um, 
you know, we're waiting for tourism to take off. It's taken a little bit longer. Human spaceflight is really hard. Mm. Uh, but what we are seeing is transportation is getting less expensive because of uh, companies that are building less expensive rockets, companies uh, that are building spaceports and the ability to launch inexpensively. So we're seeing a real renaissance in technologies that people have dreamed about forever, but now we're actually being able to test them in space. There's a lot of that sort of the private sector coming into it. And yeah, things, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, the capability to repair satellites robotically on orbit and yeah. maybe construct them and uh, build large facilities uh, that allow us to enable transportation, kind of like a giant port. Like a hub, yeah. Sure. You know, if you, if you look at the autonomous ports in Australia mm, sure. and all the work that gets done, and so you can send huge amounts of cargo, which is really important because if you're trying to keep humans alive on Mars, yeah. you're going to need to carry everything with them. It's, you know, their food, their toilet paper, their oxygen, everything's got to go with you. Mm. And, and so I do think that we will see humans back on the surface of the moon in about 10 years. Okay. And I'm still hopeful 20 to 25 years on Mars. Do you know uh, Marissa Rosenberg? Um, this is, she works at NASA. Um, I was speaking to her at an event last year. She works around VR, but training uh, astronauts on the, on the ground. Um, around sort of, you know, the experience. How, how much training do you think from a tourism perspective would a civilian need to go through to even just you know, go out of the atmosphere? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, we have taken some people to space uh, who have never been before and yeah. are not professional astronauts. Uh, you have to have some training to make sure that you are not a danger to the rest of the crew sure. and to the hardware on orbit. Yeah. Um, you'd kind of laugh. I mean, a lot of it is like, um, don't break the toilet. <laughs> yeah, sure. Really, don't break the toilet. That's like an emergency. Mm. So, but it's it's uh, it's possible to get that kind of training depending on the complexity of the system you're trying to operate yeah. in in less than six months. Okay. And for some of the tourism that they're talking about now, five minutes on orbit, a few hours of training is probably going to be okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's definitely within the grasp. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having a chat. I want to take too much of your time. But yeah, really, thanks for coming down to South Stud and uh, really exciting stuff. It was great to meet you and great to be here. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.